We're going to get started yeah. tonight. I'm going to tell you the same thing I said this morning. I'm ready for the different A, B groups, morning, night groups to be back together. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for Wednesday nights to be back and Thursday prayer. I'm ready for that. We need to pray for the Lord to move things in that direction. We want to open the service up tonight in prayer. We have a couple of prayer requests. Um, the first is um, Sister Dorothy Lujan sent me a prayer request for a young man named Jacob Lewis. He, I'm going to try to remember because I just read the text quickly. Um, was in a serious accident. He lives in the home with her son and their family out in New Mexico. And um, he's got a lot of broken this and a lot of broken that, and and he's in serious condition. So he needs prayer. Um, also, his name is Jacob Lewis. Also for prayer for um, a family I don't know, 87-year-old woman was um, lost her life in a car accident on the highway in Pembroke earlier today, and there's injuries as well, as well from other people. So just prayer for her family and ask God to minister into her family. Also, Brother <coughs> Derek Knox and his wife were scheduled to come down early August to do the men's retreat that's taking place. And uh, Canada has reshifted res their um, allowances. Uh, they were supposed to be able to get in and out of the country July 31st, and now that's moved to August 28th. August 28th. So they've extended it another month. And so we just want to pray for the Lord to um, intervene, if at all possible, intervene in, in his being able to cross the border. He and his wife, if it's his will, then it will happen. That's, That's all there is to that. Any other prayer requests? Brother Steve. Prayer needs. Praise, Praise God. Praise the Lord. Brother Nickerson, your mom and dad, right. you held them up the other night. Praise God. Amen. For those that aren't well, our, our, our older saints here in the church, for God to move in Alma and Rolly's life and Walter's life. Amen. For touches in their body and strength for them. Amen. Amen. Continue Amen. to pray for Sister Judy Lindsay. Um, right. She also found out her back was not good again recently which is how she initially found out she had the multiple myeloma and in um, the pictures that they took her back she has a broken back at the L12 vertebrae area and it, the the cancer that she has does cause her to have just random breaks sometimes so just got God for God to um, heal that and also to deliver her from the pain that she is experiencing from that amen Amen. Sister Iana. All right. Praise God. Amen. Praise him. Speak the Beautiful. truth in love, right? Praise Amen. God. For Praise God to God. open his heart to yes. understand yes. and receive what the Lord speaks yes. through you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Praise the All Lord. Right, sure. I want to lift up my uh, co worker, Lauren. Um, she, about a year and a half ago, was diagnosed with POTS and with Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. And with that is a myriad of different symptoms, um, racing heart, um, heart rate that will go from 40 to like 130 in a matter of seconds. Um, and with her career as a dance teacher, it's, it's, it's very, very hard. And so the heat isn't helping and she's just constantly going for more tests and they're trying to figure things out. And I know that it's a strain to her and anxiety for her. And then with all these other things going on, I just have a burden 
for the Lord to intervene and work in her life um, and, and just make a way for her. Yes, let's yeah. for, pray for Lauren. Amen. Sister Rachel. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's awesome when people see Jesus in us and causes them to hunger to know him. Praise the Lord. Also continue to remember, pray for Brother George Guy. He does yes. have some positive yes. numbers that have shown up in his um, ICU ward where he's at, and um, he's been in there for a while, probably a month or more with this virus. Um, but God is able, more than able, God to able heal to and deliver and save. And uh, when he does make a decision that's contrary to how we pray, we've got to believe with the same faith that his, his will is being done because great faith has been prayed. And so we know that his will will be done. Amen. And for God to bless the word tonight, Brother Stephen's here to bring the word in a little bit, and we're looking forward to what God's brought for us and will deliver through him. If I say that slow enough, it'll come out right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's praise and worship the Lord, Lord in God, prayer. We thank you, God, Lord we God. thank you, Lord Hallelujah. God. In Jesus' name, we Lord, praise we you, Lord God. Lord, Lord God. For these needs, Lord God, we pray, God, that you would God. touch him. According to your will, Lord, Lord God, to change Derek, laws and times, Karina, Lord, to make him they're coming to from travel, Canada, Lord God, Lord God that you would open the doors, Lord right, God, for them to be able to travel. We pray, Lord, Lord God, God, for Jacob Lewis tonight, Lord God. He's been in a terrible accident. He has many broken bones, Lord God. His, his body is very torn up from this accident, and we pray, Lord, that you would touch him in his body and heal. Lord, and bring salvation to Sister Dorothy's family, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, in your name, God, for those that are infected with this virus, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would move and heal in their bodies, Lord God. We pray for Brother George Guy. We pray, Lord God, for Sister Bentley, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would minister healing in their bodies, restoration and strength, Lord, in your name. We pray, Lord God, in your name, Jesus. We pray for every family member and friend, Lord, and those that we've been witnessing to, Lord, the seeds that have been planted in their hearts that you would bring them to pass. We pray for Lauren, Lord God, that you would touch her in her body, that you would cause every portion of her body to function, God, as you created it to function that you would yes, touch and that you would heal there. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Ayana's youth pastor, Lord God. Open his heart, Lord Jesus, to understand. Open his heart to receive, Lord, the truths that have been planted, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, hallelujah, Jesus, that you would purge this nation in this world, Lord God, of sin. Lord God, if this is a judgment, Lord God, on our nation and our country, we pray and repent, Lord God, and ask for forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, that our churches might be able to be restored, Lord, to worship and praise. Hallelujah. Bless your word, Lord God. Lord, we pray for Mr. and Mr. Nickerson tonight, Lord God. We pray that you would touch them in their bodies, that you would heal, Lord God, in their bodies, that you would refill them with the Holy Ghost. Lord, and cause them to hunger, Lord Jesus, after you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Glory and praise, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory in your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus, you are Lord. 
Let's just worship him just a little bit more. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, we need you, Lord. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, in the midst of us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. Oh, come on, reach up. Just reach up and we worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you, musicians. Amen. You may be seated here tonight. Yeah, good to be in the house of the Lord here tonight. Just a quick reminder, uh, if you made missions commitments, then please send those in with your other offerings because the missionaries are still in the field and they still need to, be the support, need to be supported. In some cases, their support might be even greater because some of them are stuck stateside and some of their families are still over in the country. So they may be having to balance both sides where normally they're all here or all there. And so just please remember that, amen, to send those in. Amen. What are we to fear if the Lord is on our side? Amen. God is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? But we serve a great God, and he knows everything that's going on. He knows our address. He knows our needs. He knows what you're going through. He's got strength for you. Amen. And I think it's important to remember God wants us to be victorious. He's not against us. He's not lukewarm towards us. But God is for us. And when we feel that wavering within us because of our own humanity or the attack of the enemy, it's God doesn't want us to waver. He's for us. And if we'll decide, Lord, I need your help, and Lord, I want your help. God, God will help you. And if you'll stand on the scriptures that God has given, you'll find yourself in a place of victory and, and taking ground rather than giving ground. Amen. Praise God. So we're called for this time to where we live in for such a time as this. As we say it all the time. And I, you know, I hear comments, you know, you hear people talking about COVID. Well, it's real. Yeah, I know it's real. I never doubted it was real, but I don't think that I need to think about it or be fearful about it the way that it's being presented. Is it deadly? Yeah, but the flu is deadly. Tuberculosis is deadly. Polio was deadly. All different kinds of things are deadly. Amen. And But God knows who we are, and I'm not saying be careless, but I am saying we don't have to be walking around in fear. We can have a confidence in the Lord. Amen. Now, it's even pro possible that Brother John Bell had received, had, had contracted COVID-19 in July because he was telling me on Friday morning, I called him up to see if they were coming for the revival. And he mentioned to me, he said, he said, I think I caught COVID on July 2nd. He said, I was at home and working and I got had been headachy all day long. It didn't feel good. Took my temperature. I didn't have a temperature. And then I got done working at home at 2.30. Grandkids were in the pool. So I went out with them thinking maybe swimming in the pool is going to cool me down. It's just the heat. And so I went and swam. It got worse and came in. And now I had a temperature of 99.3. And my headache was worse. I'm aching all over. My throat is bothering me. Tries to go to the doctor. His doctor's closed. So he goes to a clinic. They take a test. He goes to bed that night saying, you know, and they tell him it's going to be nine days before we can tell you the result. So he did, he did isolate for one Sunday, missed that because he didn't want to get anybody 
sick with it, but he prayed that night. And the next morning he woke up and he was better. Never had another symptom. God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. And sometimes the very things we're worrying about are things that God really wants to give us a victory in. God wants us to go through those things so that he can work. Amen. Again, we're not talking about being careless or disrespecting other people, and, and, and we're not talking about that, but we do not have to have the fear about it. And as far as I can see, it's not really any worse statistically than normal flu. Amen. So, let's stand here tonight. Amen. And again, if you feel like you, you, you need to have a mask and all that, that's fine. I wear a mask, too, when I go in public most of the time because I respect other people and their, their concerns. Amen. Tonight we got Brother Stephen bringing the word for us here tonight. Everybody say, God bless Brother Stephen. the Lord, saints. Amen. Let's turn our attention to the Lord one more time. Amen. Lord God, I glorify you. I praise your name, O God. Oh Lord God, anoint my lips, O God, that I might speak your word, O God. Let it be holy and acceptable in your sight, O God. Oh Lord God, have your way. Oh Lord, you are worthy. Oh Lord God. I want to turn our attention to Haggai, the first chapter, verses 1 through 9. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetail, governor of Judah, and to Joshua. Joshua, the son of Josek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but you have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe ye, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mount, mountain, mountain, and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came too little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow on it, saith why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because mine house that is waste, and ye run every man into thine own house. You may be seated. For a short time tonight, I'd like to speak on the idea of build me a temple. All right. That's good. Turning our attention back to verse 2 and 4 through 4. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the house of the Lord should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you to dwell, O ye dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day might bring. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek ye the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We cannot count on tomorrow to seek the Lord. We have to choose this life today. Amen. Because there is going to be a day where he may not be able to be found. Matthew 24 and 36 says, But of that day... And our knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 
We don't know when our time is going to come. If you think back to the days of Noah, Noah was out there for years building an ark. That ark was huge. Everybody around him must have seen that ark. And I can almost imagine that there must have been a couple of people that kept to themselves saying, hey, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll go up and see what Noah's been doing. He's been working on this for a couple years. But one day the rains came and the door was shut. Oh, Coco, so. This world, the Bible tells us, seek ye first the, the kingdom of God and all these things would be added on to you. This world tries to tell us to seek the things of this world first, then if there's anything left, seek the Lord. But because of that, it, it brings us to the predicament that they're in, in verses 6 and 7. Ye have sown much, and it bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, and ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe, ye, clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Isaiah, the 55th, 55th chapter, verses 1 says, Ho, oh, every one that thirsts is come to the waters, and he that hath no monies, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness, including incline your ears, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Why are we putting off the things of God for things that will not satisfy our soul? You spend wages on, the money that we earn is us selling our time. Why are we spending our time on things that are temporary? You look at people who say, well, you know, it's not right, the right time for me to start going to the Lord, but they want to look for the new job. They want to look for the new house. But these things will pass away. While we leave these things, while we leave the temple of God desolate for things that do not satisfy us. First John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. Yes. The things of this life always leave us wanting more. And they're never enough to satisfy us. But if we look to God first, he will be able to sustain us through any time. Haggai 1 and 9 says, You looked for much, and lo, it came too little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow on it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. When I was reading this verse initially, the Lord put a picture on in my head. If you grab sand... You hold it. The picture that he gave me is that a wind coming through and blowing that sand out of your hand. We try so hard to hold on to the things of this world, but if you look at the people who are supposed to be on the highest echelons of life, why is it that they're never satisfied? Why is it that they're always looking for the next high, the next whatever? It's because the Lord blew on it. It's when we... We're continuing to seek the thing that the world has. The Lord just blows on it. If you look at Matthew 7 and 24, Therefore, whoever, 
whosoever heareth these things, these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken unto him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, who built his house upon the sands. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. Look at this year in particular. With the pandemic that we face, right now we have some of the highest levels of depression, anxiety that we've ever seen. It's because we've put our faith in earthly things. God is blowing on the earth right now, and he's looking to see who has a grasp on him or who is holding on to these earthly things. Those of us whose eyes have stayed upon the Lord will be able to walk out of the boat. Even with the storm around us, we'll be able to step out and be confident because our eyes have stayed on Jesus. Going over to verse 8, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will, I will be glorified, saith the Lord. What is this temple that the Lord is asking us to build? Acts 17 and 24 says, God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. First Peter 2 and 5 says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That temple that he's looking for now is us. The whole idea of the temple in the tabernacle in the Old Testament was to create a place that God could dwell with his people. Now that with the Holy Ghost, that is us that he's looking to dwell with. Right. Exodus 25 and 8 says, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I might dwell among them, according to that which I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. There is a pattern on how we should live our life. No average temple will do Colossians 1 and 15, speaking about Jesus, says this, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Christ is that pattern in which we are trying to build our lives. Crucify the flesh, follow him. He's the one that I'm trying to be like. Psalms 37 and 23 says, The steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fell, fall, he shall not utterly be cast down. The Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is our pattern that we're trying to follow after. Pick up our cross and follow him. Though it may be hard sometimes, that cross may be heavy, but nor his seed begging bread. He will always supply what we need if we follow him. First Corinthians 3 and 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Another buildeth upon, but let every man take heed now, he buildeth thereupon. For other foundations have no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We need to look at our foundations. Where we're putting our trust in. We can build the biggest temples, the greatest places for the Lord, but if our foundations are wrong, 
they will fall with time. That foundation is Christ, the gospel, the fact that Jehovah in the Old Testament came and robed himself in flesh and died for us. No one else could do what he did. That is the foundation that I stand upon. Psalms 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O Lord. Have I sought thee? O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in, the sta in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. His word is the building blocks in which I will build my life. Together with him, I'm going to look towards him and put it together piece by piece. If something doesn't fit, I'm going to clean it up so I can make sure this word aligns in my life. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. I'm just going to keep building this word into my life. Back to Haggai 2, 11 through 15. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, with his skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then Haggai said, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer is unclean. Now I pray you consider from this day upwards, from before a stone is laid upon, upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. In 1 Chronicles, we're told that David wasn't allowed to build the temple because he was a man of war. The Lord is looking for a clean temple to go to. In Acts 2.38, it says, Then Peter said to, unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of ye in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Without baptism, there is no repentance. The Lord is looking for us to be clean because he's looking for a relationship with us. He's looking for a people who are separated for him. Psalms 23 and 3 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanities or sworn deceitfully. Matthew 7 and 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. These people were not set apart from the Lord. Yes, they did great works for God, but they never had that relationship piece because they were, everything that they built was unclean. And because of that, they were not welcomed into the, with the Lord.
We must remember that this is his temple, though, that we are building. Second Corinthians 6 and 16. In what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Again, it is God's desire to dwell with us, but he will have nobody sitting beside him on the throne. In 1 Samuel 5 and 2, it says, When the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon, so they brought the ark of God into Dagon's house and set it by Dagon, and when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon fell upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fell upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither priests of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house on the threshold of Dagon in Asherod to this day. When the Lord comes into our lives, he's going to put some things in order. We get into trouble when we put those things back to where they were before. Anything that cannot be subject unto the Lord needs to be cut out. Because in Matthew 18 and 8, it says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into, the, into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet cast out into the everlasting fire. Matthew 21 and 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out them that sold and brought into the temple, overthrew the tables of money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, is it, it is written, My house shall be called a temple of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. We get so tied up in the things of, these, in, of this life that we lose sight of what's important. But after Jesus clears out the temple, rearranges the furniture a little bit, Look what, look what happens. The blind and the lame came onto him in the temple, in the temple, and he healed them. Sometimes we're not getting what we need for, from God because we are not setting things aside and putting things in the correct order. And I'm going to close with these last couple of thoughts. Again, in Haggai 2 and 9, it says, The Lord... The glory of the, this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Whatever it costs me to build this temple, whatever I have to tear down in my life, I'm going to do it because the latter temple will be greater than the prior one, it says. Amen. Matthew 13, 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. So this merchant went out looking for something, who when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold it all that he had and bought it. The word pearl, pearl here from the Greek can be translated to proverb or word of great value. So I submit that that word of great value was the Bible. Right. And what's in this word is worth more than anything that the world has to offer because he sold everything that he had for it. You wouldn't do that if it wasn't worth the more. Right. And why do we do it, do all this? Because we're preparing a place for the Lord to stay with us, and it's his desire for him to be with us. And the last ver couple words of uh, verse 9 says, In this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. He's there. His peace is there. At this time, I'd like to return the service over to Pastor Olat.
these guys. Amen. Many, many great ideas there, Brother Stephen. I'll tell you what really <laughs> struck me is when you read I, Exodus 25 and 8. It says, and make me a sanctuary that I might dwell in the midst of my people. Make it according to the pattern and according to all the instruments that I've showed thee. Again, many people want to be the temple of the Lord, but we've got to be built according to the pattern. God's got a pattern for us. Amen. It's not just we get God and we are what we need to be, but there is a pattern. So we have to study the Lord, the life of the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit, and the aspects that God wants us to be. God is holy. Be holy for I am holy. And so that's part of the pattern that God wants us to be, to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so many people want to build a temple for God, but they're not willing to build it according to God's specification. We are the temple of the Lord. Amen. Let's stand here tonight. Lord, we thank you for the word that we've heard. We thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy. Lord God, we see, Lord, that you're trying to build in each of us, Lord God, a temple, a place for your habitation, Lord God. And Lord, as Brother Stephen said when he closed, Lord, that when you're there, the peace that passes understanding is going to be there. When your presence is there, there's going to be the fullness of joy that we need in our lives and the pleasures forevermore, Lord God. And Lord, we know through experience, Lord, that there's things in this life that may satisfy for a moment, Lord God, but only you can satisfy in eternity. Only you fulfill all the things, Lord, that we really need. Lord, help us to remember that, to keep it in our minds. Help us to strive to let God fashion us according to his purpose so that he may dwell in us in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Amen. You're all dismissed in the name of the Lord. God bless you.